were adventurers. It's the total freedom. And the idea that you sat out in the wind, you know, with the wind blowing through your hair. It's just the open cockpit. It is just fantastic. Motorbike in the sky. You're just up there, you're on your own. You're master of your own destiny. Autogyro represents the sheer spirit of flying. It is seat of your pants flying. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Go on, bro, uniform, Papa Mike. Engine failure. Western boundary, cup right air fuel. Landing one zero, cup right. How safe are they? In my experience, the Autogyro is probably one of, if not the safest form of aviation. Being allowed to fly just about everything uh, that there is to fly, from aeroplanes to helicopters to autogyros to gliders, and having had engine failures in aeroplanes and helicopters and autogyros, I can tell you that of the three of them, the autogyro has got to be the easiest aircraft to land without an engine. It's absolutely fantastic. And if you like, I'll demonstrate it to you. So here we are, we're descending in some fairly tight turns to lose some height. An autogyro may look like a tiny helicopter, but there's one major difference. The rotor blades are not powered. A propeller drives the machine forwards. The blades rotate and give lift. If the engine cuts out, the blades keep turning, and like a huge sycamore seed, the gyro can float safely to the ground. OK, and here we go. We're running in now. Focus it towards the ground, into the flare, holding it up, holding it up, holding it up, and we're down. And that is a practice engine failure to the ground from 1,000 feet. Kirkbride Airfield near the Solway coast is the unlikely home of the country's largest autogyro club. The 50 or so members are keen flyers, but not decorators. So what are we doing? Some painting then? Well, I suppose if there's no flying going on, there's this wind and stuff. I suppose. Yeah. Do we have to? Can't we go to the pub instead? It's kind of real, isn't it? He hold the pot and I'll hold the brush. Close me in here uh, about... Uh, three years now and it's working out really well it's a you know it's a very very friendly atmosphere here you know every time i come up here roger's got some bloody job that we've got to do isn't he exactly I mean, you know you can't you can't actually do the important stuff like flying <laughs> that's a, that's a cheeky sod. this is not a rich man's sport these are just ordinary guys like mally johnston from carlisle through the week i'm a dental technician i've been self-employed for 20 years now, my own business. So one day I seen Roger taxiing these auto gyros about Carlisle Airfield, and I thought, I wouldn't mind a go at that. Well, I'm a bricklayer by trade. Uh, I've got my own building business. I've done for the last 20 odd years. I was very apprehensive, kind of scared really, like I didn't know what these were, these auto gyros. Got strapped into this two seat VPM. Roger was in the front, I was in the back just for the trial flight. And once we left the ground, it was better than what I expected. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, about four foot off the ground there, it's fine. The club has the only full-time auto gyro instructor in the country. Chris Jones is much in demand. This is Jamie. He's come up from Henley. He's done about 15 hours so far. He's doing very well. Yeah, he's got a very gentle hand with the controls. And that's the main thing that uh, you know these aircraft respond to very sort of small inputs and you don't have to be harsh or brash with the actual uh, control column it's good it's nice nice and steady and again at least the student is in the air another member ex-squadron leader martin temple isn't he's got a problem with his rotor blades they're not set correctly and he's determined to get to the bottom of the problem using an appropriate measuring device. What you see is what you get. You can either do it with electronic equipment or you do it the old stick and pencil way. And 
this is a stick and pencil way. And what you're trying to do is to get the blade path passing through the same spot. And it shows here, because the crayon has struck the lavatory paper in these two places, that it's actually about an inch out, which is not good enough. It has to be about the maximum width of a pencil. I've spent too many years standing underneath the whirling dervish there with the, uh, with the bog rolls. I'd much prefer to be in here. It's much safer. All I've got to do is drive the thing. The aircraft in itself it acts like a mad go-kart whilst it's on the ground. But actually, once you're up and flying and it's doing its job, then it's tremendous. You know, you've got this magic carpet and you're just covering the ground quite a bit faster, but there's just a sensation of it just floating along. It's very manoeuvrable. When you come back down to the ground, you suddenly think, I can do it. I can go fly. I can actually do this. To any other form of aviation, this is actually quite a, a, an advanced manoeuvre, actually being so close to the ground. But this is the only way we can teach people to fly gyroplanes basically from the advanced stuff back up the ladder. Uh, anybody could fly around you know, at a thousand feet, you know, you're not going to hit the ground. But it's really this two foot flying along is very accurate because it's very small minor adjustments to the stick and uh, you know, the, the guys do, do very well. Right chaps, let's have a, have a go at this. About time. Despite Roger's grumpiness, Martin is sure the club mechanic and boffin Mike has fixed the problem. Mike, can you just slacken off the... Uh... Sorry, thanks. What they have found is that one blade is flying higher than the other. Now, you want them both to be at the same level. You don't want one above the other. If they're, if they're like that, then you get a lot of vibration on the stick. Some time ago, I was a good guy for a flight, and he arrived for the flight with this good lady wife. We went for the flight, he enjoyed it, came by, he was buzzing, he got out of the aircraft and announced that was absolutely fantastic, better than sex. I said, hang on a minute, steady on, that was a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> Never has a toilet roll been more closely scrutinised. Right looks like the two colours have been mixed together. Yeah. yeah. So it's spot on. Yeah. Well, there's no point if you buy a two-seater if I don't like it, isn't it? You will like it. You're going to like it. It's wonderful. You're, with, you're in the capable hands of Mr Savage here. He taught you to fly? These? Felicity's husband, Martin, is keen to buy a bigger, better machine. He needs to convince his wife, who's never been in an auto gyro before, that this is a good idea, and persuades Roger to take her up. Well, this is a pleasure flight, really. Um, I used to instruct quite a lot, but now um, Chris does most of the instructing, and I just fly for pleasure, which is great, really. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Excellent. Yep. Next up, the moon. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Martin is determined she'll love it, but Mike the mechanic hardly fills her with confidence. That we call the cheetah bolt. The one you call the Jesus bolt is under here. There's, there's a ball race up in here, and it's secured by one great big bolt and nut. And if that comes undone, Jesus is the only one that can help you. <laughs> it's going to be fine. You're telling yourself that. <laughs> Another club member, Colin Gilholm from Selkirk, is a bit more encouraging. The buzz you get from it, it's, it's unbelievable. It is. I've had fast bikes, fast cars, fast horses, but fast this... Women. I wouldn't say that, man. Frightens you, excites you. Doesn't it? <laughs> I'm expecting it to be like 3D motorcycling. I hope it is, but I'm not very good at heights. Martin's hoping for, um, hoping to buy a two-seater, but there's no point if I don't like it. So this is kind of like. But do you think I'm going to have to say no? I don't like it. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Clear prop, starting up. She's just got to sit there sweetly and enjoy the ride down for the ground. Felicity is not the only one who's going to take to the air. The boys decide to put on a bit of a show. 
This type of flying, after all, is all about fun. Well done, Captain. OK. <laughs> it was brilliant, actually, because I hate fairground rides, and I was a bit sort of a bit anxious it might be like that, but it's not. It's, it's fantastic. So you had a bit of a delay coming out. Coming up, from Ireland, a new flying student gets his first look at what lies ahead. And from Spain, the ELA, a new state-of-the-art two-seater machine that the authorities say can't be flown. Welcome to Cumbria. Thank you very much. Windy Cumbria. It certainly is. This is Killian Clisman. He's made the long journey over from Ireland to spend a few days with instructor Chris Jones. He's flown helicopters before, but never an autogyro. Students have come from as far afield as Mexico to fly these machines at Kirkbride Airfield. So we've got the two seaters, the single seaters, um, but these are the ones we're going to be training on. Right. The VPMs. So, this is the one I use. Uh -huh. um, obviously, student sat in the front, yourself sat in the front. I've got full control in the back. So, to start the start up procedure yeah. is master switch on, yeah. two magnetos on. We only use one fuel pump in flight, and then good look round and shout clear prop and then press start. I was at a show in London about a year ago where I met Roger Savage briefly. And I'd always been fascinated because I, I actually studied I actually studied to learn to fly helicopters. Um, and while I enjoyed it immensely and I, I and I would enjoy immensely flying helicopters, it, to be honest with you, it is out of my league. Um, I'm not a very rich person and I think it's a rich boy's sport to be a, to be a helicopter pilot. So what can Killian expect to pay for an autogyro? The range of prices for the basic model, which looks like a flying deck chair, um, you'd be looking at around about six thousand seven thousand pounds for this uh, the basic model moving on to the fiberglass um, version of this again with a normal two-stroke engine on here you'd be looking at around about nine to ten thousand pounds and then onto the two-seaters around about twenty three thousand pounds for the two-seaters this is the new state-of-the-art ela it's a two-seater, factory-built machine from Spain. Top speed is about 90 miles an hour, with an endurance of about four hours. This one is licensed in Ireland and on loan for a month because club members can't fly their own ELAs. There's a bureaucratic hitch. It took making a lot of false teeth to save up for one of these, but for Mally Johnston, it was worth it. A couple of years ago, we, we went out to Spain. Uh, Roger had seen them on the internet, and we thought they look a nice machine. So three or four of us went out and we, we flew them in Spain. Everybody liked them. So we said, we must have. And we just wait for the paperwork to come through so that we can fly them. It's ironic you can self-build an auto gyro in your back shed and then fly it. But this factory-built machine, you can't as yet. Because of a complicated certification procedure, Roger seems to spend more time on the phone chasing the necessary authorities Hi. than he does flying. It is. Hi, Christina, thanks for calling back. Yeah, I did, I was just uh, checking on progress. Any progress on the ELA? It's absolutely frustrating. So I, I just 
very, very frustrated and I want my own machine flying as soon as possible. Look, that's really kind of you to call and we'll just uh, wait for some more news and uh, fingers crossed. No definite news for Roger, but at least things are moving forward. All right. Muchas gracias, Christina. Bye-bye. A lot of students spend a lot of time actually rocking between the nose wheel and the tail wheel. It's a waiting tail. game too for yeah, Killian as he's due for his first day. flight with Chris as soon as this lesson is finished. Good, trying to get that nose wheel up as soon as possible. This is Steve Scully, uh, he's a local teacher and he's now on the single seat syllabus of uh, flying gyroplanes. Uh, this is actually his own machine. Good. Good. Trying to keep that nose wheel off the ground. What he's doing is trying to balance on the main wheels in order to keep the nose wheel and tail wheel off the ground. Reduce the power, reduce the power, reduce the power. They are flying machines after all. So can you hear me alright Steve? Good. So yeah, again, yeah, it's obviously the left wheel came up a touch and then yeah, just get that left wheel back down again. Yeah, I know, it also like went pear shaped, but you saved it, so that's good. So it's experience. Well, I'm at the point now where I'm just about to start taking off, unless I accidentally catch a gust, in which case I do. But uh, it's fantastic. I've been working up to this over the last four or five hours of uh, training, so I'm just about on the point. Chris is happy now, and uh, so I, I feel I'm ready as well, so I'm really excited. Oh, it just gives you a buzz every time you see them. It's wonderful. Some weeks I get here and the wind's not right for me, and I can just watch the other people flying, and it's, it's not as good, but it's almost as good. Time at last for Killian to get suited and booted. Really excited. I, I, I will have to see what, what, what is going to confront me, whether I'm going to enjoy it or whether I'm going to be frightened. I don't know yet. I know it's going to be cold up there, so I'm getting uh, well kitted out. They say it's like riding a motorcycle in the sky, so I don't want to be cold. <laughs> Good prop. The instructor sits in the back of the machine and the student in front. It's the best seat in the house. Well, it was just a fantastic feeling. You're hurtling along the runway and you feel like you're in a go-kart or something and you're bobbing around. And then the next thing, you feel everything go quiet and light, even though the engine is just as loud, there's just a piece that comes on and you just kind of start climbing up and you just re suddenly realise that you're floating, or rather that you're flying, and it's just an amazing feeling. And then when, you, when I'm up a little higher, I'm given the controls, and that's an even more amazing feeling because I'm controlling it. It's absolutely fantastic. Kirkbride Airfield is a great base for this kind of flying. The surrounding countryside looks stunning from the air. Single-seaters have a range of about an hour's flying time at 65 miles an hour. A two-seater can fly faster and longer. The club has regular sorties to Scotland, the lakes and the coast. And for Chris, there's an added bonus. My girlfriend at the moment is looking for a house and we've been out flying above the countryside, you know, looking at the different areas and a certain different aspect, looking at the ground from the air. It's tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Back to earth with a gentle bump for Killian, but the buzz remains. I'm completely converted now to my first flight. I, I, I kind of had a, an idea of what to expect, but um, I, I've been waiting a while now to, to find my slot for my training, and I've come from Ireland. And um, yes, I'm going to be back as soon as, soon as I can book another, another slot, I'll be back again. Um, and as soon as I've saved up the money, maybe the two of them will come at the same time. <laughs> very, very easy to fly. So, you know, and you did really, really well. It's absolutely Thank brilliant. you very much. It's great. So, well, I really enjoyed myself. Great to meet you. Great. Okay. And see you in a few weeks. See you in a few weeks. Thank great. You. Cheers, Cheers. How do you do? All right. All right. Roger expects the club to hear any day now that the new certification is in place. Right. Heard any news about the certification yet? Uh, it's coming on. Yeah, all the flight testing's been done. And uh, they're just waiting for the paperwork now from the Spanish authority. Good. So it's looking good. It's looking good. very good. The best, actually, it's, it's looked for quite a bit. 
I'll just put it in the hanger and... It's taken almost a year so far, Absolutely. and all Mally and the other members oh, who've invested oh, in one of these oh, machines oh, can do oh, is oh, grin oh, and bear it. So, yours next? Mine next? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Right, I'll give you a hand off with it. Spot on. The club would be much better off. The future of the sport would be much better off with aircraft like this. This represents the future of gyroplane flying, not just in, uh, in England, but in Europe and elsewhere. This type of, of aircraft with a modern engine, uh, it's built to a very high standard. It's carbon fibre throughout, stainless steel. Um, absolutely tremendous. A very, a very good, very high safety record. And it's what we want to see. It's what people out there want to see. And it, I believe it's what the CAA want to see too. With the last of the students gone for the day, it's time for the boys to play. I mean, if you get airborne first, right, and then we follow, I mean, one either side right. of the BPM, yeah. And then we'll take off in a sort of Vic formation. So there'll be four of us? Yeah. Well, another... Well, a diamond formation. What, a di I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll go in yeah. behind the two two-seaters and the two single-seaters on the outside. OK. Right. Shall I fly on the right, then, and you on the left? Is that OK with you? Yeah. Fine. In the event of problems... No OK. Problem. Tell us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. And we'll uh, scatter. We're adventurers, and whilst the Autogyro is basically a very easy aircraft to fly, you are flying, as I said before, by the seat of your pants. And it's that dimension of flying that, that I think attracts us all. And the idea that you sat out in the wind, you know, with the wind blowing through your hair, it's great fun. That's what it's about. And the camaraderie that goes with it. Again, I liken it to motorcycle. We go out on a Sunday afternoon. It's just like a bunch of guys getting on the motorbikes and, and going out for a while for the afternoon. It's the same thing. It's just we get the same buzz out of our sport. It's absolutely fantastic.